to me, listen to me real good. I've told you once, I said it a thousand times. You get out of those pagan, satanic, religious, Christian churches. Christians do not follow the commandments of the Bible. Christians do what they want to do. They make up their own laws, their own rules, and their own regulations. Come out of her, my people, and come out from among them. And it's real simple and easy to ascertain who are these people you need to come out from. Easy. Number one, if they keep Sunday, that's an automatic sign that you need to not have any fellowship with these commandment-breaking, wicked deceivers and seducers and bewitchers of the truth. Simple. Hallelujah. Abba, y'all, we do bless your magnificent, wonderful name. We thank you for always being mindful of us, your people. And it's dysphoria. Uh, we long and yearn from Shemaim to come down. We need more than anything, Father. Your presence, by the power of the Ruah, to minister to us here, your set-apart people in this strange land. There are many people out there that need to understand and open, and some you have already drawn, and you have a few more that you need to. Grant unto your servant the words to be able to penetrate into the conscious and the minds, the hearing of the ears by the power of your spirit, to grant understanding and salvation unto those you have already predestined and foreordained and to have eternal life. Uh, speak to us your words of truth. Promise to give Jesus all the praise and all the glory. And sinners will be converted because of our life, the way that we live, to show your glory through us in this earth. In the magnificent and wonderful and powerful name of Yahshua HaMashiach, amen. You may be seated. All right. Well, you know, um, I've been dealing a lot with the prophets. And, and of course, a lot of people are, are understanding the history. They're, they're getting this. And, of course, if people would go back into my archives, you know, they would get a better understanding. Now, you do understand that there's no way for you to understand what I am preaching and teaching. Uh, it's impossible to look at and even hear what I'm preaching and teaching through unconverted eyes and ears. You cannot listen to the word that I'm preaching and teaching today with a Gentile mindset or an American mindset. Nor can you understand what I'm speaking about today from an English perspective or Western perspective. Um, we are here to rebuild, restore, um, and to bring back the old paths. Uh, the scripture says we find rest for our souls when we do that. Hallelujah. And surely we need rest for our souls. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. So the Holy Spirit has not been barren amongst us, not once. Um, he has endured um, us uh, in his dysphoria. He has uh, drawn his people, like I told you he was. I told you he was going to bring um, some serious-minded people um, through this. And, uh, and that's what we're, we're getting to. And I think that people are starting to really grasp the message. You need to really understand that Israel is more than just a word like Christian dripping off of your edge of lips. You know, the edge of your lips. You know, you drop Christian off your edge of your lips and it mean nothing to you. Huh? But this is a particular people. This is Yah's chosen people, a set apart people. And be you Jew or Greek, uh, you can come on in through this covenant. Uh, Brother Saint, I'm all, I'm all script, but I'm on script, okay? Uh, Galatians uh, 3.27. We um, are thankful to the Most High because he has definitely blessed us in his hour. And you can tell he's blessed us because he's given us knowledge and understanding. And we need that because understanding is a wellspring of life. Is that right? And after that, I want you to get Galatians 4.24. Um, it's a wellspring of life. And um, when you embrace that you are the real, true Israel. Be you home-born, natural-born, or in the diaspora as a stranger, 
you accept the laws, the statutes, and the commandments, receive the adoption, um, Yahweh is your king. And you need to understand you cannot be a Christian and be an Israelite. You cannot be a Muslim and be an Israelite. And so I need to define Christian just a little bit for understanding. Baptist, Methodist, Apostolic, Catholics, Pentecostals, Mormons, UPCs, um, it's Episcopalian, uh, Church of the Living God, Church of God. And y'all begin to get this? Hmm? The Holy Eucharist. Uh, I, I, anyway, you understand what I mean. I can go on and on and on. All right? Yah is only called one nation for his people. And he didn't say all Christians were going to be saved. Go read the book. He said, and all Israel shall be saved. So since he said that, it's, it's, it's pretty easy for us to understand we need to be that people. Is that right? Galatians 3.27. Come on with it, Brother Shane. For as many of you as have been baptized into Christ have put on Christ. Keep reading. There is neither Jew nor Greek. Y'all hear that? There's not a who? Jew nor Greek or Yehudim. Yehudim. Hmm? Or Goyim. Or Greek, Greek or Gentile. Is that right? Read. There is neither bond nor free. Bond nor free. Watch this. There is neither male nor female. Now we understand when we look in here, we see male and female. Is that right? Yeah. It's talking about in reference to salvation. There's no superiority from one, one over the other. Are you following me? Generically. You get it? All right. Read on. For ye are all... One with three. One. Two. One. Divided. One. Isn't that something? We're all one in what? In Christ Jesus. And if ye be Christ. Then watch this. And if you be Christ. Now let's go back and redefine this again. Read verse 28 again. There is neither Yehudim nor Greek. Y'all hear that? There is neither Bond nor free. And I think that the Apostle Saul had a greater understanding than the people we're dealing with today. What about you? I agree. I'm with you. I bear witness. Read on. There is neither male nor female. All right, come on. For ye are all one in Christ Jesus. We're not all what? Two? One. Three? One. Four? One. Five? One. We're all one in Yahshua HaMashiach. Is that right? And it, Notice. Read. And if ye be Christ. And if you be what? Christ. Christ. And remember, he came to save his people from their what? Sins. Sins. Hold that for a second. Go to Matthew 15, 24. This is for all the new people out there that are coming on board and, and doesn't have a good understanding because we're not going to spend much time on this. We're going to get back to, to, to get to our father's business while we're here. This is our father's business as well. But you're not going to be clear on anything that I preach or teach until you hear the word and be like the Bereans. Be more noble than the people in America. Go back and don't search the, the New Testament. Go search the scriptures and see if what I'm saying is so. Because you come from on your New Testament perspective, you, I, I'm, I'm going to be the devil in your eyes. <laughs> Isn't that right? Come on, brother St. Reed. But he answered and said. What did he say? I am not sent. This is Yahshua HaMashiach, the Messiah, Jesus Christ, right? I am not sent, but to who? But unto the lost sheep. Of who? Of the house of Israel. Now go back to Galatians 3.28. There is neither Yehudim nor Greek. There is neither bond nor free. There is neither male nor female. For ye are all one in Christ Jesus. Does that make sense? Is that all right? Is that all right? All right, Acts 28, 28. We're shooting from the hip. That's a term we use in the military when we're just spraying. You know what I mean? <laughs> now, you can do that with a saw squad automatic weapon or an M60. You don't want to be nowhere near the receiving end of any of that. That I promise you. Man, I tell you, in my day, I know you're going to find this hard to believe, but I promise you, in my day, I used to be able to rock two M60s like this. I'm serious. You think I'm kidding, don't you? Mm -hmm. I ain't lying either. Can't lie. Liars go to 
She old, huh? Oh, no, Guyana. Guyana. To hell. That's hard to believe. But it's the truth. It's the you honest truth as he bear, bear witness. I forgot what I even asked for. Read Acts 28, for. 28. Be it known, therefore, unto you <laughs> that the salvation of Yah is sent unto the Gentiles. Now, wait a minute. There's Gentiles in here. It's ethnos, right? We looked up, right? It's ethnos, right? So salvation is also sent to Gentiles. So you understand where the people refuse to grasp it because there seems to be some type of racial superiority on all sides of the fence today. You understand that? Everybody want to claim Israel. Everybody does. And the majority of people that claim it, they don't even keep his commandments. Did y'all see my video on Hebrew Israelites? Question mark. And I got a couple of people that are honorable. I mean, these are young, honorable young men and they're just misguided. And, they're, and, I, and I'm responding to them, but they're just seriously, sincerely misguided. Am I making any sense? Big time. Are they misguided? And um, I'm trying to recover them out of the snare of the fire. Uh, but in order to do that, you have to lay down all these false doctrines and these false traditions and, and everything else you inherited. You understand what I mean? That's the reason why all of these people, them, the Messianics, whoever they may be, they're having a hard time coming together. They can't come together because they're too divided. I responded and asked, well, I'll tell you what, if y'all coming together, then I'll tell you what. Who's going to be the leader? Who's going to be the wise man? There's, there you go. There's the division. Who's going to be the prophet? Let, let, me, let me make it simple, okay? If we're coming together, who's going to be Ezra? Everybody can't be Ezra. Huh? Is that true? If we're coming together. Coming together, having a summit is not coming together. Oh, you coming together, but you ain't together. So if you come together and you still go back to the same place you came from, you ain't together. Coming together is when you dwell together. When you live together. Uh oh. Yeah, oh, hallelujah. And that's what we're hastening to. We're trying to get people free. I mean, I, I got a vision. Because without it, we're going to what? That's the book. It didn't say your vision. Well, tell me yours. So I can get behind it. Tell, t tell me your vision then. Is that making sense? Galatians 4.24. Which know, things. You know when I was a young preacher. I used to call chapter and verse. Every single scripture. And I do that for three hours. I say it's a waste of time. Because there wasn't no chapters and verse. We just do it today for reading. You understand what I mean? But, I mean, I figured now, if it, I didn't do it under the wrong spirit, but I see a lot of people do it under the wrong spirit. Because you're supposed to use the word to gain. You understand? If you have knowledge, you have wisdom, the ideal is to draw all of those who drew you, which is the Father. Isn't that right? Read on, brother Shane. Which things are an allegory? Mm -hmm. For these are the two covenants. Now here are the two covenants, all right? The one from Mount Sinai. Y'all hear this? The one from Mount Sinai. Which, right. which engendereth to bondage. Y'all hear that? Which is Agar. For this Agar is Mount Sinai in Arabia. Now where is this Mount Sinai at? In Arabia. In Arabia, all right? Of course, it's talking about basically the who... The sons they bore. Read on. And answereth to Jerusalem, which now is. Nah, that's where we're getting to. And it answers to Jerusalem. Now, which one is it? Hmm. Are you following me? Because right now, a lot of people have their center of attention and focus on this worn, torn city yes, called Jerusalem. Isn't that right? Yes, sir. Is that right? And believe it or not, the scriptures tells us that our heart is supposed to be fond for Jerusalem. I mean, I have a sincere fondness. You understand what I mean? I mean, really, truly, but you ain't got no fondness for Jerusalem. You, you barely have a fondness for the house you live, live and dwell in. You don't make any sense? 
We're in exile to Yah. All right? But look what this, new, this Jerusalem that he's talking about. This, this Jerusalem has a particular place. Where is it, Brother Shane? Which now is, and it is in bondage with her children. Mm -hmm. But Jerusalem, which is above. Where is it at? Above. Where is it at? Above. The Middle East. Above. above. Define the Middle East. Above. above. The land of Shem. Above. above. Adjacent to Canaan. Above. Next to Ham. Above. See, when the Messiah came and said, this day your house is left unto you desolate. And he had the temple tore down. He had enough of Israel. So-called acting like that they respected him, honored him, and loved him. He said, you ain't worthy. All the, every time, it, it just don't make sense. It literally don't make sense. You know what? That's why the prophets, Jeremiah and Ezekiel, prophesied that he was going to tabernacle with men. And Yah don't dwell in a temple made with So this new Jerusalem is coming down out of Shemaim. Or look, this new Jerusalem is coming down out of heaven. Are you following me? It's coming. And that's the one that we're interested in. So when you talk about the kingdom, you better have that city in your mind. That's right. You get depressed, you think about this Jerusalem over there. Huh? This this Jerusalem is being trodden down of the Gentiles until the time of the Gentiles be fulfilled. Are y'all listening? And right now that land is inhabited by Gentiles. Not, not, not the real, true Yehudis. But then the enemy done pulled a flim flam on the whole world. You getting it? Hallelujah. Hallelujah. That's why we need understanding going forth, all right? We're going to be in the prophets again for a little while, all right? We're going to be in the prophets just for a little while, okay? Because we need this. When we understand what the prophet understood, the prophets understood, then we can better chart our course going forward. Is that right? Old paths. Nothing new under the sun. I mean, if the Messiah constantly said, it is written. It is written. It is written. That don't mean we go write it ourselves. No. It's already been established. Isn't that right? Glory to the king. Isaiah 51 verse 8 says, cry loud. Spare not. Lift up your voice like a trumpet and show, look at this definitive, my people. Now I'm sorry to disappoint you people in the world out there, but Yahweh's people are not Christians. They are not all the peoples of this earth. This Bible is Hebrew. Written by Hebrew authors. Are we understanding this? Because it was the Hebrew Elohim that gave it to them. And if you're going to make it to New Jerusalem, you have to become an Israelite. Now you think about this. If you was still a Christian in mind, you'll be insulted. And that's what people are experiencing today because they don't understand because they have been looking through the long, wrong lens. They have on the wrong set of eyes, the wrong glasses. See, I, I'm proud of being Israelite. Now I do, I live it, I eat it, I breathe it. See, as an Israelite, it's stupid to me, Yahweh Elohim, that changes not. It says, isn't that right? Let's, let's quote it right for the new people out there, right? I am the Lord thy God, and I change not. Therefore, you sons of Jacob are not. So now all of a sudden, we got problems. If we have a philosophy or a perspective that comes to us and tell us that if I pray over this pig, that Yah was going to set it apart for me to be sanctified when he called it unclean in Moses. In the law. Now if you go ahead and, and, and somehow with your twisted war perverted mind think that that thing is going to all of a sudden hocus pocus and become clean. You're a liar. 
That's the reason why many of you still have these piggish natures. There's an old saying in the world, you are what you eat. Don't get mad at me because we're defining it just like it is. You can't transgress the law. Huh? The only law that all these religions, especially Christianity, that will keep, bring your tithes into the storehouse, that there may be meat in my house. And prove me now herewith if I will pour you out a blessing. And it's amazing, isn't it? Isn't it right? Isn't it right? Now, wait a minute. That's in the law. Why come that law ain't done away with? <laughs> this is called mental gymnastics. I'm serious. See, they cherry pick. They selectively pick what they want in and what they want out. And since the swine is a delicacy, just like, just like the sea maggot. I, that's right. They don't know what that is. Shrimp. It's a de- yeah, it's, it's, it's a... You know, if you ever seen a, a, no more than a half a mile up the road here, we have not even have a quarter mile up the road. We have a home, a couple of homes that is literally cockroach infested. You know what a cockroach look like in a home, right? You ever been to places and seen cockroaches? Huh? In the projects, they got cockroaches. I've seen plenty of cockroaches as a little boy growing up. I know what a cockroach look like. Huh? That's the same thing a, a, a shrimp is in the sea. It's a live living cockroach. Y'all put some duck sauce on it. Sprinkle a little lemon over it. And say, y'all, we thank you for this. Uh, it, we know it's an abomination. But you know, all of a sudden, y'all done changed. Because you have mentally said, I am going to pray over this. And Yah's going to clean this. Now, it didn't say that Moses said that pig was unclean or swine. It didn't say that. It said Yah will say it. And since he doesn't alter or change anything that's gone out of his lips, that means that this philosophy that we have in front of us has got us in trouble. And we still have too much of the residue of it in us. If you're not careful, that thought pattern will sneak up on you. It will mess you up. And it's hard today trying to get people to change or renew their minds. Somebody got to cry. Somebody got to scream. Somebody got to holler. Somebody got to shout. And Brother Darrell, you you hear me pretty good, right? All right, watch this. Can you hear me? You can't hear me. You didn't see my lips moving? What? Can you hear me? You still can't hear. Can you hear me? No. (laughs) (laughs) Believe it or not, that's the only way that we can hear today. Because it, it, you see Brother Darrell's reaction. I, what? <laughs> because as long as we are talking like this, you can't hear. You can't. You know why? Because you hard-headed. You are dull of hearing. And of course, here in this society where we try to be dignified. You know, anybody that raises up their voice to them, it equates somebody who has a loss of control. You understand what I mean? Because we're trying to be dignified. That's why the prophet said, you got to really cry aloud. You got to really, and don't spare why you crying aloud. And if you're going to lift up your voice like a truck, Elder Donnie, go up there and blow that thing, brother. Blow that thing loud. Huh? You can hear this. But if I'm blowing a trumpet like, who's going to prepare themselves for battle? <laughs> Uh, we getting ready to get overrun by a siege and we're up here. You ain't even going to wake up. Blow that thing out of Donnie. Blow it loud. Just hit a note. Now that's crying loud, isn't it? Huh? And if you're used to that sound, thank you, Elder. Are you following me? You will prepare yourself for battle. But if somebody come with a different sound, you won't prepare yourself for battle. 
And the reason why we have not prepared ourselves for battle is because we are still hearing the trumpet of Christianity. You ain't, you ain't preparing yourself for no battle. Are y'all getting this? Hallelujah. And, and, and it's still. Remember, I put emphasis on the prophets and everybody told us to, to don't go in. Now we're on the other side of this thing of the Messiah that says, come out. Is that right? Change the message, it will change the people. They who have ruled over us have deceived us. Now, you need to understand this. You need to understand this. The Europeans have actually sacked the temple in Jerusalem. They took all of its books. And they placed it in its temples. And then they redefined it, retranslated to where it's been watered down. And as a result, look at the people today that call themselves holy. They don't resemble anything, including from the translation that they come up with. Does that make sense? Huh? So something is gravely wrong. Hallelujah. And what they've done is repackage the Hebrew thought and give us another thought. And so what have they done? They changed the message. In essence, they have changed the people. Now, do you have the revelation that we are in exile to Yahweh? Do you understand that? Are you following me? All right. Psalms 37 verse 4. How shall we sing Yahweh? Song in a strange land. Y'all hear that? How can we do this? How can we sing the song of Yahweh in a strange land? Is that right? If I forget thee, O Jerusalem, let my right hand forget. Now, in case you don't understand that, we can go ahead and, and, and test this out today. All right, Brother Darrell, come on up here and put your right hand down. Lay it down right here, brother. All right, do you want your right hand? You do? You don't want your right hand? You want your right hand? Brother Darrell said he wants his right hand. So that guess what? That means we can't hack off his right hand right now. That means he don't want to forget his right hand. Y'all understand that? Huh? Because if he forgets his right hand, the implication is that we would forget Jerusalem. Thank you, Brother Darrell. I'm glad you want to keep your right hand. That's where our mind need to be at. Are y'all hearing me? Our minds need to be there. And see, I'm afraid that we have had too many philosophies and perspectives presented to us that, that we no longer, because we have not really studied the scriptures, we, we no longer have our attention and focus in the right places, in the right areas. We're cumbersome about with too many matters that are unimportant. And, and, and those matters, you make them important because they make you emotionally and physically involved rather than spiritually involved. Is that right? If I do not remember thee, let my tongue cleave to the roof of my mouth. If I prefer not Jerusalem above my chief joy. And what does Americans do? They put their joy before the love of Jerusalem. And mind you, it's not talking about this worn, torn city over here that is being trodden down to the Gentiles. It's talking about the one that Yahweh made himself, the one that's going to come down out of heaven. Are you following me? And see, and, and we, you, the only way you're going to be fond of this is you have to research this matter, study this matter. If I'm, and when you start reading and you start beginning to understand and you realize that now you are the people of this covenant, it will bring a fondness to you. If I'm, and then your attitude will change. Your perspective will change. Your outlook on life will change. Does that make sense? And, and then your natural joy in this earth will be diminished. Because you can't have joy if you ain't going to the city. It's superficial and artificial. Is that right? Are y'all getting this? Remember, O Yahweh, against the sons of Edom. Notice. Mind you, he says, do what? Remember. The first thing you hear in the commandments, too. Remember the 
Sabbath day. Remember, O Yahweh, against the sons of? In other words, he don't want you to forget. Now, we know that Edom didn't start off wrong, but they ended up wrong. We know just by history because we're students of history. Now, you're not going to believe me until you do your own due diligence and research. Is that right? So you can argue all you want, but guess what? The burden of proof is on you if you disagree with me. Is that right? That means you have to go and prove what I'm saying is wrong. And I would wish you well. Is that making sense? But most people today, they don't want to do anything. They don't want to investigate nothing. Why? It's the same lazy, lethargic, and apathetic spirit that is complacent in this land that we've learned from the heathen around about us. We, we, we put a cheap value on our soul salvation. We don't even really truly care if our name is written down in the Lamb's Book of Life. Our mouth says it, but our heart don't believe it. Do you understand? The day of Jerusalem who said, lay it bare, lay it bare to its foundation. And it was literally laid bare. To now, they got you believing the temple that these Jews are over there pecking like a woodpecker was actually the temple. If you go research it, you'll find out it was a Roman fort That's the truth. called Fort Antonia. <laughs> but they call it the Wailing Wall. You should be crying and wailing for being at that wall. You're in the wrong place. <laughs> These folks got spiritual schizophrenic and spiritual Alzheimer's. <laughs> but all you're going to do is get mad at me if you are not informed. Isn't that true? Am I telling the truth, Brother Titus? Brother Titus is a history buff. He's a history buff, too. And, and, and not only Rome, but there was other nations that sacked Jerusalem, the natural. So y'all... Yahshua Hamashiach, Jesus, he finally said, I don't care two bits about this temple. You done turned it in, into a Walmart, a farmer's market. You're supposed to be in here praying, but you pray to go get some pig on sale. You can have it. He said he's going to temple and tabernacle with men. How did he, why did he say that? Because the prophets had already called it. There it is. Already called it. O daughter of Babel, Babylon, who are to be destroyed, blessed he who repays you your deed. In other words, whoever kills Babylon, whoever annihilates and destroys Babylon are blessed. But notice what it says. What you did to us. And this world don't have to understand that whatever you do to Yahweh's people, you are doing it to Yah himself. Because nobody would ever be, I'm not going to fight Yah. But you're already fighting him when you fight against his people. You can't get this understanding in the philosophy and the religion of Christianity. You got to come out of that thing. Prophecy, dual in nature, many, many times. This is a, 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 a what we would call a replica of the old ancient Babylon. All right? And, of course, according to history, they say Babylon was located in Iraq. All right? Modern-day Babylon. See the contrast? It's amazing that even when you go back and look at these ancient hieroglyphics and everything that they have written, written on the wall and drawings and stuff like this, why in the world if these people are not Babylon, why go build a building like it? Huh? Well, I mean, think about that. I mean, if this is ancient Babylon, then why go build a building like that? Is this making any sense? Hmm? Now, I'm going to come on down off my high horse this morning of knowledge and understanding, okay? I'm going to come way down. I'm going to come way down. That even a child can understand what I'm saying. I have to come down because I ain't that far up. But I'm above you. See, you sitting down, I'm standing up. Ah, oh, never mind, brother. You ain't going with me today, brother. 
I didn't chop your hand off. Jesus, that would hurt, man. That would hurt me more than hurt you. <laughs> but is it not amazing? Don't you understand that people communicate to you by what they do? I, I, I keep trying all the time to put a defibrillator on our mind. Man, you hear what people say, but don't pay too much attention to that. Pay attention to what they, that tells you what their interest is, who they are, and everything. So look at that, modern Babylon, and of course, guess who's in charge of that modern Babylon? Huh? To Helium 37 verse 9, blessed is he who shall take and dash your little ones. All the little ones of this one right here and every nation associated with them, your little ones are going to be destroyed. Your children, whatever you've done to the children of the captivity of Israel is coming on you. That's why I tell you America is damned. America is doomed. And the Jews are doomed. And the nations are doomed. This is why. It is written. And it's going to be performed. So they're going to take your little ones and dash it against the rock. Y'all was the ones going to do this. All right. Revelation 14, 6. And I saw another angel flying in the midst of heaven, having the everlasting gospel preached unto them that dwell on the earth and to every, every kindred, tongue, and people. What was preached to them? The everlasting, the good word, the good news. Is that right? Saying with a loud voice, fear Yahweh. Yahweh. And I'm sorry, the only way you're going to show you fear him is by your keeping or guarding his commandments. Right. You can say you love Yah all day long, but if you don't do his commandments and teach them, you don't have no fear of him. How, you know any people like that? Oh, I love God. I mean, I know they love God. Tell them to ask him who their God is. Does your God allow you to keep Sunday over the Sabbath? That's the transgression of the law. And what is sin? Transgression of the law. We wouldn't know what sin was if the law didn't tell us. We don't have to worry about the law because the law is written for the sinner and the ungodly. The righteous man don't need no law. As long as we're not transgressing, it don't impact us none. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. It's only when we transgress that the law and the force of it means something. Does that make sense? Same with the loud voice, fear y'all and give honor. I mean, give glory to him for the hour of his judgment is come. Notice it didn't say days, weeks, months, years, decades, centuries. It didn't say all that. It says, look at this. Hour. 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 Hour, hour. It's going to take the most high every bit of one hour to annihilate Babylon. That's how powerful he is. And believe me, I think the one hour has to do when the smoke gets finished settling. <laughs> I mean, finished. I mean, finished. He found it ain't going to take him a whole hour. They, they, they just put it in there. That's because they seen the smoke for an hour in a vision. <laughs> <laughs> and worship him that made heaven and earth and the sea and the fountains and the waters. And there, make sure, and there followed another angel saying, Babylon is fallen, is fallen, the great city. Because she had made all, no, she had made all nations drink of the wine of the wrath of her what? Fornication. All of these rulings. Nations are confederate against the true children of Israel. You're going to have to go read Psalms 83 to find out what it says. You see, if you notice, Chuck Mitzler, Chuck Smith, all these other people, Jack Van Hennepe, TBN and stuff, they tell all these stories like fairy tales. You know, just like it's just a, a history story. You understand what I mean? Harvard Law School, Harvard School of Divinity. They, they, they teach all these things like... Um, you know, it, it, this is the Israelites. These are the people, but they never make it personal to you. If your heart knew that that was your people that was in transgression, that was causing all this death, hell, and destruction coming up on them because they were rebellious, are you rebellious? 
Look at you. We don't want to answer. And I don't understand it. And they answer him not a word. Because they knew they were rebellious. They knew their condition. It's amazing, isn't it? Uh-huh. Just stop being rebellious. <laughs> oh, hallelujah. I know it's, a, it's amazing, isn't it? Huh? So go read that, and you'll get a good understanding of history. This right here, these are the ones that are behind all of the nations of the earth. Rothschilds, building burgers. Are y'all listening to me? These are the people that are ruling all the nations of the earth that has actually oppressed Yah's people, which is the children of Israel. And now, as the old age is going, you can't beat them, join them. So Satan has deceived all the earth by making a people that's not the people a people. And everybody buying it, that's why he called it Judeo-Christianity. What the hell is that? Hmm? And this nation, which is the military might, funds this nation, but this nation funds this nation. And the Congress and the Senate is controlled by this nation. This is all a game, a political game, and a front they're putting up in front of you. There's your European Union. Them are all the nations that are confederate. Look at the flags, they tell you all. I'm sure everybody knows what that one is. Hmm? Not one of them flags is, is from what they call today to redefine the Middle East. European Union member state, uh, uh, states, Portugal, Spain, France, United Kingdom, Ireland, Belgium, Luxembourg, Germany, Netherlands, Denmark, Sweden, Finland, Estonia, Lithuania, Lithuania Poland, Czech Republic, Slovakia, Aust uh, Austria, uh, Slovenia. What's that one? Slovenia, okay, Hungary, Romania, Bulgaria, Greece, and Italy, Cyprus, Mulatto. Now think about that. Them are the nations, all in Confederate. And you can throw a few more in there. I'm just talking about the ones that have joined the United Nations. All right? These are the nations all in Confederate against the children of Yah's people. Revelation 14, 9 says, And the third angel followed them, saying with a loud voice, If any man worship the beast... And his image, and receive his mark in his forehead or in his hand, the same shall drink of the wine of the wrath of who? Which is poured out without mixture into the cup of his indignation. And he shall be tormented with fire and brimstone in the presence of the holy angels and in the presence of the Lamb. Now, think about this. The world say they love Jesus. And can you imagine that Jesus is going to get pleasure watching people get burned in fire and brimstone? That's a totally different concept from what is taught in Christianity. Huh? Who has adopted the hit song, all we need is love. And love is nothing but honey dripping off the edge of their lips, but they really don't mean nothing. Think about this now. Look. And the same shall drink of the wine of the wrath of Yahweh, which is poured out without mixture into the cup of his indignation. And he shall be tormented with fire and brimstone in the presence of the holy angels and in the presence of the lamb. That means the lamb going to have a front row seat to watch all these people getting burned up. Because people forget that this same one stated a long, long time ago, vengeance is mine and I will repay. Now, you look at Christianity. Who in the hell he going to take vengeance on following their doctrine and perspective? Because y'all's a God of love. That's another Messiah, another salvation that has been preached to you. And that's why people are perishing today because they're being destroyed for a lack of knowledge. And when knowledge comes in front of you, what are you already hardwired to do? Reject it. I don't believe that. It automatically comes up. That ain't the way I was taught. I don't I'm Baptist. And that trumps all scripture. <laughs> And the smoke of their torment ascended for how long? Ever. Forever and what? Ever. And they have no rest day or what? 
who worship the beast and his image. And guess what? The whole entire world is going to worship the beast and his image. The only ones that are not going to worship the beast and his image are the ones who have a place prepared for them where again? In the wilderness, according to Revelation chapter 12. Yah has a place prepared for us like he did in the first exodus. In the second exodus, he has a place prepared. And he, since he already scattered everybody from the four winds to the four winds of the earth, he's the, he that scattered is the one that will gather. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. What do you care if human beings don't accept you as an Israelite? Who cares? Who cares? Y'all getting cold in here? I, ain't gonna ask, I hate asking that because you got all these different bodies in here. But anyway, who cares what these people say? Y'all know them that are his. And the one way you know them that are his, he gives you his ruach, his Holy Spirit. And it's that Holy Spirit that's in you that's going to get you to the wilderness. If you ain't got his spirit, you are none of his. So if you don't talk in tongues, you better start making up some tongues to do something. You better start doing something. You better gibber and jabber all you want. And that's just a confirmation or to confirm for you. Yeah. It's not a sign to me, I believe. <laughs> oh, hallelujah. And they have no rest day or night who worship the beast in his image and whosoever receiveth a mark of his what? Not only do you have a mark in, the, in your right hand, your forehead, but there's also the mark of his, his name. And notice, in religion, everybody's putting emphasis on name. Name. Now, it's a setup. I'm telling you, it's a setup. We'll talk about this. Here's the patience of the saints, and here are they that do what? Keep the commandments. Mean Now, that word keep is really watered down. You should use the word guard. There's a difference between, here, I'll keep this in my pocket, as opposed, now I'm standing guard. See the difference? There's a difference. And when it's, you change the message, change the word, and change the people, and guess what? Now you got a bunch of sorry ass people that's posing as y'all's people with this attitude that has been given to us by the philosophy of this world. And when a true Israelite starts crying aloud, sparing not, you've already been hardwired to say, what's wrong with him? Ain't nothing wrong with me. What's wrong with you? Well, you the only one hollering and screaming like that. Well, there ain't nothing going on. You got that right. That's why I'm hollering and screaming. <laughs> y'all getting this? Who keep the commandments of y'all in the faith of Jesus? Remember prophecy. <clears throat> Over in Better Sheet 926 or Genesis 926, remember prophecy. And he said, Blessed be Yahweh, the Elohim of Shem and Canaan shall be his servant. Y'all hear that? Now watch this. How did Canaan be in his service? Because we went and sacked the land of Canaan. All right? Yahweh shall enlarge Japhat. If you don't want me to defy, define it for you, the European Union. That's how you break history down to bring it from where it was then up to this point now. All right? He shall enlarge, enlarge the Japhat, and he shall dwell in the tents of Shem. Why you think it's a hotbed over there right now? Huh? Jerusalem is being trodden down by the Gentiles or the white man. Uh, they already own all of Egypt. Now all the ancient Egypt 5,000 years ago who was black, they're all white now. You ain't figured that out? Huh? We have decimated and destroyed and annihilated America has. The Iraqis army and, and we're putting sanctions and, on, on um, Iran. Why? Middle East. Uh, they're enlarging. They're enlarging over the landmass of Shem. Y'all getting this? Yeah, colonization. And Canaan shall be his servants. Japhat. 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 Y'all getting this? Now, this ain't racism to tell the truth. Revelation 18, 2, and he cried mighty with a strong voice, saying, Babylon, the great is fallen, is fallen, and has become. Now, notice. Let me stop here for a second. But if you have a doctrine called replacement theology, then, it's not, then you are not them people. 
See, you just played mental gymnastics. You just replaced a people and put yourself in there. <clears throat> Babylon, the greatest fallen, is fallen has become, this is Revelation 18, the habitation of what? So guess who is in Babylon and guess who is in all the tents of Shem now? Devils. That's why the Muslims call the white men a devil. <laughs> now I don't believe all the white men are devils. I know black devils like I know white devils. But the white man is the one ruling his earth today. There was a time that black man ruled his earth. But the white man is ruling and he is ruling hard. A nation of fierce countenance. They will not have any regard for young or old. Matter of fact, they, they, they are so cold hearted and callous, they don't even have regard for their own. That's why you got to have a new heart. Mm -hmm. You really truly do. Everybody, you better have a new heart. Look, it's the habitation of the devil and the whole every foul spirit. What kind of spirit? Foul. And a cage of every unclean and hateful bird. For all the have drunk of the wine of the wrath of her fornication, and the kings of the earth have committed fornication with her, and the merchants of the earth are wax rich through her abundance. And her delicacies. Now everybody, you know, now what does the Gentiles do today? The Christians. They want to make you think this only has to do with the Roman Catholic Church. Yeah, they do. Babylon is more than just a Roman Catholic Church. <laughs> Are you following me? Huh? And I heard another voice from heaven saying, come out of her, definitive, my people. And his people are not all the people of this earth. That you be not a partaker of her sins, nor receive of, not of her plagues. For her sins have reached unto heaven, and y'all have remembered her iniquities. Reward her, look at this, even as she rewarded you. Double unto her according to her works. And the prophets have already spoke about this. Joel spoke about this. In the cup which she have filled full, or which she have filled, filled, what is that filled, filled? To her double. How much shall, I mean, how much she have glorified herself and lived deliciously? So much torment and sorrow give her. For she saith in her heart, I set a queen. And I am no widow, and shall see no sorrow. Therefore shall her plagues come in. Where's the one? One day. Death and mourning and famine. She shall be utterly what? I wonder who's going to do all this burning. There's not a friend. Like the lowly Jesus. No, not one. Do I sound like Frank Sinatra? Kind of, sort of, not really. What a bad note of him. I'm getting there. I got to warm up and crank up. Do, re, mi, fa, se. <laughs> One day, all of this, death, mourning, famine, shall utterly be burned with fire, for strong is Yahweh, Yahweh our Elohim, who... <clears throat> he got to judge somebody. He just ain't going to be putting the Chinese in the Valley of Jehoshaphat. I mean, that's, that's, that's a good way to dress it up as an American, isn't it? He going to put the Chinese and the Russians in the Jehoshaphat, and he going to burn them up. No, your ass going to be the first one to burn you don't want to got your ass over in the tent of Shem. Yeah, right. <laughs> this is right order and perspective. Yes, sir. And the kings of the earth who have committed fornication, that means all the nations that are confederate with her, yes, and live deliciously with her, shall be well her. Why, damn it, the stock market done crashed. I ain't getting no more of this fiat enjoyment no more. They have enriched us and, and made us rich. And now look. 
shall bewail her and lament her when they shall see the smoke of her. Watch this now. Watch this. Standing afar off for the fear of her torment, saying, Alas, alas, the great city, what? Babylon, Babylon that mighty city, for in how, how long? One hour. One hour is thy what? Most high is going to do a quick work. Hallelujah. Speedily. Hallelujah. And the merchants of the earth shall weep and mourn over her, for no man buyeth their merchandise anymore. The merchants of these things which were made rich by her shall, shall stand afar off for the fear of her torment, weeping and wailing, saying, and saying, Alas, alas, that great city that was clothed in fine linen and purple and scarlet and decked with gold and precious stones and pearls, for in... You think we all pay attention to one hour as much as we keep seeing that? So great riches has come to naught, and every shipmaster... Key word. And all the company of the ships and sailors, as many as trade by sea, stood afar off and cried when they saw the smoke of her burning, saying, What city is like unto this great city? And they cast dust on their heads and cried, weeping and wailing, saying, Alas, alas, that great city wherein were made rich all that had ships in the sea by reason of her costliness, for in at one hour or something else, isn't it? She is made desolate. Rejoice over her, thou heaven. And ye all oh, look and ye holy apostles and prophets, for Yahweh have avenged you on her. And the mighty angel took up a stone like a great millstone and cast it into the sea. Saying, thus with violence shall the great city Babylon be thrown down and shall be found no more at all. Skipping to verse 20, or 24. And in her was found the blood of prophets. You notice that everybody's trying to set up camp over there in Jerusalem? They're going to do it too. Hmm? That's the hub. That's the spiritual hub of fornication. The biggest gay pride in, parade in the world takes place in Tel Aviv. Sodomite city, what they should call it. The land that they call Israel today. Sodomite city. This is where they love destroying the prophets. And the saints and all that were slain upon the earth. Prophecy. Come out of her, my people. Prophecy. Come out of her, my people. Brother Saint, get a Revelation 11. Start at verse 1. Saints of the Most High, y'all, the end is near even at the door. And you can't become relaxed and complacent. You have to really truly keep yourselves in the fear and the love of Yah. Because it's easy for this flesh to get, get, get at ease in Zion. And this world is designed to lull you to sleep. And one way they do that is when you take and partake of this flesh by being lazy as hell. Mm -hmm. A little slumber. A little sleep. Yeah, a little... Never mind. You don't know the book. You don't even know what I just said. It just didn't. It was like, what did he do? What bad thought doing now? Come on, brother. Say read. Listen to the book. And there was given me a reed like unto a rod. Mm. And the angel stood saying, rise and measure the temple of Yah. Measure the temple of Yah, right? Come on. And the altar and them that worship therein. But the court which is without. But the court which is what? Without. Listen to what it says. Read. The temple leave out and measure it not. For it is given unto the nations, the Gentiles. Is given to who? The Gentiles. Y'all see the prophecy. Is given to the Gentiles to what? 
And the holy city shall be tread underfoot forty and two months. Did not the Messiah say that it is given over to the Gentiles? Yes, All right, read on. And I now, will. That is Japhat enlarging himself in the tent of Shem. Read on. And I will give power unto my two witnesses. And they shall prophesy a thousand two hundred and threescore days clothed in sackcloth. Mm. These are the two olive trees and the two candlesticks standing before the Elohim of the earth. And if any man will hurt them. If any man on this earth ever tries to raise up a hand or tongue or any matter to try to hurt them. You can even try to send an F-15. You can even try to blow up and annihilate the whole city. And there's no man on earth that will be able to hurt them with nothing. Listen to the book. Read. Fire proceedeth out of their mouth. They the ones gonna be doing the destroying. <laughs> Y'all hearing that? Yes, they the ones gonna be doing the destroying. Read. And devoureth their enemies. They're gonna devour who? Their enemies. And of course we know, according to Luke, the first chapter, starting at verse 68, we know we have enemies. Read. And if any man will hurt them, he must in this manner be killed. I can't wait. To see on TV people getting scorched and seeing why they stand on their feet. If they, I mean, wouldn't that be something? And instead of people repenting, because that come on, that's supernatural right there. Huh? Instead of people repenting, they ain't gonna do me get mad. Watch, read. These have power to shut heaven, that it rain not in the days of their prophecy. Y'all hearing that? Prophets had power like that. Huh? Yes, they did too. They can shut up rain and everything. Come on. And have power over waters to turn them to blood. Man, this almost sounds like Moses and Aaron again all over, don't they? Read on. And to smite the earth with all plagues. Do y'all remember how the Mizraim was smitten with all these plagues before Israel's deliverance? As it was. So shall it be in the end. Huh? Read on. <laughs> as often as they will. Every time, as often as they will. Isn't that something? Good thing I ain't one of them. Because they, they, it'll, be, it'll be every time I take a breath. <laughs> Read on. And when they shall have finished their testimony. And when they finish their testimony. The beast that ascendeth out of the bottomless pit. Man, this is some serious stuff taking place. Huh? No wonder Hollywood is massaging us and getting us ready for all these things. We look at these movies. Now you got a beast, and he's going to look victorious because he's sending up out of the bottomless pit. Because everybody else done tried to annihilate these two. Nobody's been successful. Then all of a sudden, guess what? The God of Christianity comes to the rescue. The God of the Jews show up. The God of the Muslims come on the scene. See, you people confused. Watch this, read. Shall make war against them. And what they going to do? And shall overcome them and kill them. Don't you think the world is... Victory. Tell of Victory. And let's see the attitude and the condition of the world. Isn't that nice? I mean, because the world perspective, the world point of view, is going to tell us what condition the whole entire earth is going to be in. With satellite and TV, man, people are going to have front row seats right in the living room to watch all this stuff. It's going to make news. You can't hide this news. Read on. And their dead bodies shall lie in the streets of the great city, which spiritually is called Sodom and Egypt. Now hold on. Hold on. Their dead bodies are going to lie in the streets. These people ain't even going to suffer to bury them. Not even give them the honor and dignity to bury them. 
in that great city, watch this, which is spiritually called Sodom, where's the gay pride parade, the biggest one in earth? Right there in Israel, Tel Aviv. But this city is spiritually called Sodom, and what else? And Egypt. Egypt. Here's the key. We're Egypt. also... Where also our Savior was crucified. Anybody know where he was crucified? In Jerusalem. You can't get no more definitive than that. And the Bible is just clearly telling us where all this is going to take place. Now, that city is also, not only that, it's, 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 it's full of sodomites. Just like Mizraim, witchcraft. Rich Same place that they killed our Messiah. Got to be Jerusalem. Read on. And they of the people and kindreds and tongues and nations shall see their dead bodies three days and a half. Can you imagine that they're going to be laying decomposing three days without the honor of a burial? I mean, they're not even going to send them to, send, send them to, to the trash yard. They're just going to leave them there. And with the, with the, with the mind of sodomites, no telling what they're going to do to them dead bodies. I mean, you know just what I do. Humans are vile. Without the fear of y'all, they're vile. They are vile because they have no governor on their beings or their soul. They literally have no governor. That's how vile humans are. Uh, and I'm not even going to go into it. Let your own mind just do it. But watch this. Read on. And shall not suffer their dead bodies to be put in graves. That's some serious hatred. Come on. And they that dwell upon the earth. Now, and they that dwell on the earth, the people that are on the earth, read. Shall rejoice over them. They're going to have one big Mardi Gras. Yep. Notice they're going to rejoice over them. In other words, where their dead body is going to be, that's going to be the sin of the party. That's going to be the sin of the party. Watch this. Read on. And make merry. They're going to make what? Merry. They're going to have drunken fest. Read on. And shall send gifts one to another. They're going to send presents to each other. I mean, damn it, Christmas got competition. <laughs> Step aside, Christmas. You ain't got nothing on this. Can you imagine you seeing these dead prophets? In the streets, and, and these people are going to make merry and send gifts to each other. We got them. We got them. Watch this. Because these two prophets. These two what? These two prophets. These two what? Prophets. What they do? Tormented them that dwelt on the earth. Why do you think this earth hates us? Why do you think these people of this, of this world hate us? Huh? Because we torment them just by our presence. Just by being existing, we torment them. That's why we, like a bunch of refugees, can only find peace around each other. Why? Because we're all transformed and renewed by our minds. You can't be around, hang around people who don't think like you. Huh? Ain't got your same spirit. And anybody who don't have our same spirit, they can't even be peace around us. They cannot be at peace. They, they can't wait to get out of our presence. Y'all getting this? Yes, but the attitude of this world is, man, they finna have a Mardi Gras. Right. They finna party hardy. Yep. Yep. Celebrate good time. Come on! <laughs> they gonna throw down. Yeah. Read on. And after three days. And after three days. And a half. And a half, the party's gonna end. Because they've been to see something they ain't never seen before. Glory. Read on. The spirit of life from Yahweh. Whoa. Oh. Entered into them. It did what? Entered into them. Uh-oh. Can't imagine them dead and all of a sudden, whoop, they raise up on their feet. Hallelujah. Them sodomites are going to defecate on themselves. <laughs> <laughs> Read on. And they stood upon their feet. They stood upon their feet and watch this. And great fear 
fell upon them which saw them. <laughs> and great what? If we are alive and we are, if we are not in the place of the wilderness and we see this, we're going to be rejoicing. We're going to be like, yes! Huh? You not, now you can run outside. And wait for that trumpet. And, and for you to get translated in a moment, in a twinkling of the eye, at the last trump. Read on. And they heard a great voice from heaven saying unto them, Come up hither. Oh, oh. all of a sudden, whew, there go your superman. Yeah. Hallelujah. <laughs> Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Read on. And they ascended up to heaven in a cloud. They ascended up into a cloud. Watch this. And their enemies beheld them. And the enemies watching this whole thing. Now understand this. There's all kind of people on this earth that have this same book that we've got. And yet they can't understand that. They can't understand it. So by the time these preachers get finished policing their minds, they ain't going to be able to make ends meet from one end to the other of this book. That's why people can't comprehend today. I mean, all you people say that you love God. That's what you say you do. All you, keep his commandments. All right? Then with the test commandment, is the Sabbath day, the fourth command. I ain't under that law. I don't have to do that. See what I mean? It's easy to mess these people's minds up. It's easy. They already got them. <laughs> they can twist, spin, and warp and distort this word anyway. And the people of the world will believe it. <laughs> Somebody like us, start telling them where you're wrong at. Watch the spirit that comes over. You seen that spirit come over that girl, that woman, didn't you? At your place of work. About the, um, uh, she wished me a Merry Christmas. Do you remember what I said? What did I say, Sister Misty? Don't curse me like I that. I said, don't curse me like that. I said, what you need to do is read Jeremiah. What did she say? Do you remember? She might. I'm, you might. And I said, oh, but you want to wish me a Merry Christmas, though. And you expect me to do that, huh? And Misty, she started moving to the other end of the counter. <laughs> Because fire's coming, boy. Huh? I left, I text Mr. I said, you better watch that spirit. Huh? They love. How you doing? As soon as you say anything that's remotely true. Whew. How you supposed to do it? What's that sign y'all do? What's these signs y'all do when people acting crazy and stuff? Y'all women, you know, cat calls and y'all do some crazy stuff. Huh? You should have seen the spirit that come over her. And Carol, Carol look, I said, hey, you see that spirit? She said, yeah, I seen it. I did not give you warnings. She said, you better watch that one. You better watch. Don't drink after. Hmm? If she passed gas, you better run. It's lethal. <laughs> you don't trust nothing about them. I seen the change. And that is the spirit that's going to be in all the people that are on this earth. It's already in our working. It's already in our hearts. You see it. You, come, you have your own experiences. You can see it. That spirit of Antichrist is there. Whew. And she's straight up anti, isn't she? Y'all see that exchange real quick? Didn't take her long at all to go from yeah. Now she did go back and read it, didn't she? Hold on. She did go back and read it, right? And, and what, what did she say? She said she Googled it, but she seen why you didn't. That's it. What? No, oh, she's seen why I didn't celebrate Christmas. It's all right for you. You know what I mean? Ah, I, I, I Googled it. Google is a new Bible. You know what, right? Google, Wikipedia. No, Google. I, I Googled it, and now I read it, but look at the mindset. I see why you don't celebrate Christmas. It ain't going to stop me from doing it, though. There it is. That's right. 
I don't care. I don't give a damn what the Bible says. I don't care what origins it has. I don't care if Satan himself involved. Damn it, I'm still going to do Christmas. I told you, Pastor Corey just called me up. He said, man, he had a heavy heart. Heavy heart. Heavy heart. I said the person said, I can't take it. I can't take I'm going back to tradition. He said, and then they turn around and put up a picture on Facebook of how happy they were in front of the Christmas tree. Can my children come and play with your children? <laughs> you know, Pastor Corey, I'm not no, but hell no. You damn idolater. You child of the devil. You full of all subtlety and mischief. Bell worshiper. See, you can't be getting fond and close and your heart start getting engaged because then you're going to be careful about how you approach them with truth. Because, see, now, 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 now you are jealous the wrong way for the Father. See, now you ain't really truly contented and fighting for truth into eternal life then because you are holding their feelings and emotions in more higher esteem and regard than y'all's truth. You've been compromised. You've been compromised. And now you just started the slide and you really finna slide. It's amazing how we miss these things, isn't it? Mm -hmm. Are you finished yet, brother? Saying what verse you in? I was starting at verse 13. Read. At the same hour was there a great... An hour again? Hour again? Hour again? Come on. Was there a great earthquake? There was a great what? Earthquake. Come on. And the tenth part of the city fell. Uh-oh. And in the earthquake were slain of men 7,000. Woo! Read. And the remnant were affrighted. And the remnant were what? Affrighted. Keep reading. This is getting interesting. And gave glory to the Elohim of heaven. Yeah. The remnant did. Yes. Why did they give glory? Man, look at here. Keep reading. That's it. Man, that's I, I want more. It's like, yeah, 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 yeah. It's getting good. Y'all seeing this? Woo, the end is near. Hosea, we already know that the prophet said, my people defended it. They are destroyed for a lack of knowledge because they reject knowledge. He said, I'm also going to reject you. And you'll be no priest to me seeing you as, look at this. Look at this. You have for what? You have forgotten the what? And Christianity say that you are not under. I just got finished making videos and stuff. And, and this week talking about people and swine and stuff. And rather than addressing the truth, they got offended and tried to defend the swine. You can see the comments on there. I'm like, man, these people are gone. I mean, address the truth that I'm talking about. But man, that swine. It, that that. Man, damn it, you should damn put a pig behind your pulpit. <laughs> I'm telling you, you just put a damn pig and put barbecue over the top behind your pulpit, all you Christians. And then put some neon lights up there and everything. Damn. You ain't never seen nobody get upset when it comes to that swine, though. Mm. Y'all said, I'm also going to forget your children. Now, Nehemiah. That's my kind of man. Hmm? Nehemiah had also warned us about the money situation that was going on. We heard about it once before in Better Sheep with yourself. And now Nehemiah, look, look at this. This is very interesting. Watch this. Nehemiah 5.1, and there was a great cry of the people and of their wives against their brethren, the Yehudims. That, you know, that's a mistranslation when it says Jews, okay? All right, but look, look at this. And, and I, you know, I like to go in to try and explain to people what this is talking about. I tried it a few years ago in Kennesaw, in Atlanta. Yep. All right, follow me? And then I made another video, and most people still didn't get it. And I understand, because it's, it's, is it not a lot to grasp, Brother Scott? You know what I'm talking about, right? They're teaching the who the Yehudis really are. 
You remember Ezra and Nehemiah? You remember there were squatters in the land? And, and huh? Y'all remember that, right? And these people became Jews. Became Jews. And these were the people, the worst people, the base people who didn't have no knowledge of the scriptures until they came down. Y'all getting it? And most people don't know this stuff. They just don't know it. And, and all right, so look at this. For there was said, our sons and our daughters uh, are many. Therefore, we take up corn for them that we may eat and live. Some also there were uh, that said, we have, look at this word right here, mortgaged our lands. We put our lands in hock. And vineyards and houses. We put our mortgage and our lands and vineyards and houses that we might buy grain. I know it says corn. Because of the dearth. The great famine. And there, and there were also that said we have borrowed money for the king's what? Tribute. And that upon our lands and vineyards. Yet now our flesh is as the flesh of our brethren, our children are as their children, and lo, we bring into bondage, slavery, our sons and our, to be what? Servants, watch this, and some of our daughters are brought into bondage already. Neither is it in our power to redeem them. You, we can't even buy, you can't even pay enough money to get them out because we ain't got it. And, and, and what is the message that I'm preaching in this hour more than anything? Trying to get y'all's people redeemed. And y'all people, I don't want to be redeemed. Trying to get you free from the Gentiles of this land. It's going to take all of us collectively working together to do this. Because we ain't got it. Not by ourselves, we don't. For other men have our lands and vineyards. Why? Because it's in hot to them. And I was very angry when I heard the cry, heard their cry and these words. I'm going to the scriptures in verse 7. I mean chapter 5 verse 7. And my heart ruled over me. And I strove with the nobles and with the deputy rulers and said unto them, that was my first shot across the bow in a long time when I made that video called Hebrew Israelites Question. Do not these people claim that they love their people? Do not they claim they want their people free? What the hell are they doing to get them free then? Having summits and powwows in rented motel rooms? That ain't going to get people free. They ain't going to get you out and get you separate. Are y'all listening? Nehemiah said, you know what? Now look at here. My heart ruled over me, and I strove with the nobles and the deputies and the rulers and said unto them, ye are exacting interest. Damn it, we are brethren, and we're sitting up here charging each other usury, just like the Gentiles do. How in the hell can we get our ass dig up out of a hole when we're doing the same thing that they're doing? Now the reason why we're doing that because we have been so much immersed in them. Their culture, their learning, their teachings, their whole, the whole thing. That we've learned how to behave just like them and we would even step on our brother. And I call a great assembly against them. Usury. Alone. Implicated by interest or debt. Exacting usury. See, us as Israelites, if you're going to give somebody a loan, all right, you either give them the money, it won't be no loan, or you just give them the money, then they just pay back what you, what you gave. Now, of the Gentiles, man, get them boogers 55% interest. <laughs> Beat city group. But see, you don't even know who a Gentile is, though. You don't even know who your people are. Well, hell, the reason why you don't know because you don't even know who you are. That's the problem. It's a very sad condition. We as Israelites have learned the same behavior here in captivity in America. We seek how we can take advantage of our brother here in America. We step on each other in order to get an advantage of gain. If there was a genuine need, it's hard for us to help our, our fellow brethren simply because some of us are not honorable. 
If we give you money, you say you're going to pay it back, you don't do it. You cannot keep your word, you cannot perform your oath. We think like these heathens, we act like these heathens, we still live like these heathens, and we are surrounded by these heathens. We are in a very sick and sad condition. Verse 8, And said unto them, According to our ability, we have redeemed our brothers and Yehudims who were sold to the who? I'm always, look, if you ever see me going out doing anything, my purpose is to redeem Israel. From the hand of these wicked Gentiles. That's what we're doing. Oh, hallelujah. That was quick, wasn't it? Y'all won't miss it. Because we're going to get down. Deuteronomy 28, 68. And y'all shall bring thee into what? Egypt. Are y'all here? Everybody stand up, stand up for a moment. You know, y'all do good if y'all going to get distracted by taking notes just by listening and hearing and then going back and taking notes later. Y'all need to pay attention. More blessed to hear than to what? Take notes. All right? Y'all, everybody, y'all fine? All right, everybody be seated, please. Gee. I'm one man trying to talk to 70-some people in here, and I can't even get a response. I bet I got more response on that camera. Did I? I wonder. I wonder. Y'all elders and y'all heads of the city, let me know if them people are paying attention out there. And y'all shall bring thee into Egypt again with ships by the way thereof I spake unto thee. Thou shalt see it no more again. In other words, we ain't going to see our homeland no more again because we'll cross the pond. Yeah. And there shall be sold unto your enemies. Notice the word sold, sold, sold to your enemies for bond men and bond women. No man shall buy you. No man shall redeem you. That's that pensmanship. Sure yeah. So I know who my enemies are. Yeah, true. I know America's my enemy. Why they? While they smile in your face all the time. The backstabbers. Backstabbers. <laughs> That's when they made music back then. Huh? Egypt. We already know what ancient Egypt looked like. Is that right? Ancient Egypt was a black empire. Is that correct? All right. We was in bondage. Same slavery. We was enslaved by blacks, and I be damned. Now we enslaved by whites. And ain't nobody discriminating against us. They all hate us. You see it? You know what that is, don't you? Yeah, that's down in Memphis. Ain't that, is that the Mississippi? Yeah, that's called the Nile. That's called the Nile. That is in Memphis, Tennessee. I wonder why the father put me in Tennessee. Got to have a voice because Tennessee, your ass about to be tore up. How do you know that? Why? Pay attention. There it is. There's a, a, sun, sun, a sunrise view of it. See the Nile? See the pyramid? Huh? Watch this. That's a statue of Ramses. In what the hell is Ramsey doing over here across the pond? In a Marigolds for Cushy land. What? Huh? Ain't a picture worth a thousand words? Well, I be something. An obelisk. What the hell is an obelisk doing in Washington, D.C.? And then the same one is sitting over in Israel. You ain't going to tell me we've been bought into Egypt again? By ships, you better believe it. And then look what's on our money. The back pyramid and an all seeing cat eye. Hell, in America, though, you know the, what they would do is they would put some eyeliner on it, some damn eyelash and everything else on it. Huh? Any, oh, praise the Lord. Y'all getting this right? Is that not amazing? All them contrasts. Huh? And the children also of Judah, Joel said, and the, and the children of Jerusalem have you unto who? Grecians. Notice, Judah and Jerusalem, the Grecians, that you might remove them far from their border. You will learn all that history in the Apocrypha too as well. Behold, I will raise them up out of the place where you have what? Somebody say west. west. Somebody say west. west. 
He's going to raise us up out of the West. How do you know that it don't say that path of die? We're going to get there. All right? And I will return the recompense on your own head, seeing I am stirring them out of the place which you have sold them, and I shall return on your own head what you have done. Every single nation. See, Egypt already done received his judgment. Isaiah told us about it. Yeah, that's why it's all barren and desolate right now. Huh? That was one of the greatest empires that there ever was. Huh? And the judgment of Yah done already took place on that. America, you next. Egypt. Yeah, you say America, but you really are Egypt. And your architect tells on you. And not only are you Egypt, you're also Greeks and Rome. Why? Because your architect tells on you. Why? Because Babylon is becoming a habitation of devils. See, the reason why these people ain't going to preach it right like I preach it, because I'm a Hebrew. I'm an Israelite. These people are influenced by other religions. And so they're going to dress it up and they're going to talk, you know, sweet words. They're going to tell me lies, tell me sweet little lies. Tell me lies. Don't you tell me lies. Why the hell would you make a song tell me a lie, man? You think about that, though. I don't care how good it sounds. Why would you want to make a song that say, tell me a lie? And everything that all these nations, Egypt treated our people roughly. And they got their judgment. America as a real as the rest of these other nations have treated the children of Israel roughly and their judgment is coming. Hmm? Y'all know what that is, right? That's the that's the Greek Parthenon in Delphi, is that right? Y'all know that, right? Huh? Then what is that? That's right in Nashville, Tennessee. The Parthenon. Got that big old goddess sitting up there with Nike in her hand. Isn't that something? A melting pot of confusion. And here we are sitting on the border edge of Tennessee. No wonder he, he had me birthed in this state. And I was looking for land all over and stuff, and I ended up getting a clearance here. He just threw me right off in the fire. I must be here for judgment. Got to be. Because y'all will not do nothing. Well, you ain't no prophet. No, but I'm a servant. Yes, sir. Unless he reveals his secrets unto his servants, the prophets. Oh boy, and we can prophesy and damn it, I'm prophesying to the wind. You better believe it too. And I will sell your sons, America, European Union. People don't like hearing it, it's just the truth though. And your daughters into the hand of who? Judah. And they shall sell them to the Sabaeans, to a people far off, for Yahweh has spoken this, proclaim this among the what? Go to Israel and tell them your ass is finished. Now, today they're so powerful, we talking like this, they don't even believe the Bible no more. <laughs> he got problems. He's special. But the people that are in the know, they know we ain't got problems. They know they in trouble. But they just don't want it to get out. That's why the devil joined everybody by giving the Europeans the power to print the Bible. That's why we have to study and look behind words and, and just, I mean, you got dang near spend three hours just on four scriptures before, before you can even get an understanding of the thing. And I'm telling you right now, I am trying to get as many Yehudins and nations, Gentiles, as many as I can to obey the covenant of the Most High Yah. Yes, you better believe it too. Why? Because all Israel is going to be saved. Every bit of them. Prepare for war, you mighty men, and let the men of war draw near. Let them come up to me. I am constantly seeking how to deliver you from the hands of the Gentiles, meaning this system. Nehemiah 5 8, and I said unto them, We, after our ability, have redeemed our brethren to use the Jews, which were sold unto the heathen. And I will sell your, your I was. And will ye even sell, and will ye even sell your brethren, excuse me, and ye shall be sold unto us. 
Then held they their peace and found nothing to answer. Also, I said, it is not good that you do. Are you not to walk in the fear of Yahweh? Why do you think, what do you think, I, what I scream and holler almost every Sabbath? How we walk in the fear of Yahweh? By keeping his commandments. His commandments are not suggestions. Huh? His statues are not something you can pick and choose and cherry pick by multiple choice if you're going to obey or not. Oh, yes, sir. Huh? You ain't got no options in this, especially if you're an Israelite. Right. You're called to obedience. Oh, yes, sir. You're ambassadors of the kingdom of heaven. Yes, sir. You understand? Yes, sir. We're representing the kingdom. We're supposed to represent it very well. Yes, you understand? Yes, These people out there ain't going to have no fear of y'all. They don't see you fearing them. They see you sassy. Walking like Fat Albert. You remember the cartoons? Yes, sir. Y'all remember that? Yeah, yeah. sir. Adiba do ba dee ba do ba da ba dee ba. It's amazing what the memory can retain, isn't it? I probably ain't seen Fat Albert in 40 years. <laughs> Isn't that amazing? Because you're approaching to the heathen, the Gentiles are enemies. They are what? The heathen are enemies. I put Gentiles so you'll know. They are enemies. And likewise, I likewise, and my brethren, and my servants, might exact of them money and corn, I pray you, let us leave off this usury. Let us stop conducting business the way that the heathens do. Y'all think we can do this? Yes, I mean, the Bible says we ought to be helpers one to another in the fear of Yah. Do you think we can at least attempt this? Yes, I mean, I know you got challenges and problems in front of you, but do you think you can? But see, we have to be careful about it. When you do good, you have to be careful who you do good to. That's what the book teaches us. Huh? Yeah, oh, hallelujah. You got to be very careful now. And since you may be lacking on some discernment and stuff, that's why you bring stuff to the elders and let us do the distribution. Because these people today who are just one foot out of Heathenville, one foot out of America, one foot out of Christianity and just came over, they automatically assume that their heart is right because they say, I love Jesus. I love Jesus. I love Jesus in my soul. He's a wonder. Oh, he's a wonder. He's a wonder in my soul. <laughs> Are you looking at, oh, they sure do love Jesus. Look at them. There's a spirit that is holy. It says it's called discerning of spirits. Yes, sir. If you one foot out of Christianity, one foot into the faith, you ain't got too keen of a discernment. No, you know, this making sense? Yes, sir. Ah. And likewise, my brother and my servants, by the exact money of them and corn, I pray, let us leave off this usury. Please give back to them, even today, their lands and their vineyards, their olive trees and their houses. We were turning around, taking our own people and holding them captive, just like the world was. It's sad, isn't it? Isn't it sad? And they said, let us give back and ask no more from them. We do as you say. Now, that's the problem I'm having today. Oh, Pastor Dow, we'll do as you say. All right, give me $100. Whoa. Uh, 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 I got to buy a Twitch bar. <laughs> I mean, I got a proven track record. I'll do right with, with whatever y'all puts in my hand. Yeah, I do. You don't. Hold this, brother. Hold it. Hold it. Come here, Israel. Put it down. Hold this like this. Come on. No, we're going to walk down the aisle, okay? You go from each aisle. Give, give, give. Give it in Jesus' name. Give, give, give. Give it in Jesus' name. 
Give, 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 give it in Jesus' name. Sing in glory, hallelujah. Give it in Jesus' name. <laughs> and of course, you're using a Christian church, you'll come back with an offering plate full of one dollar bills. <laughs> Isn't it right? Y'all gave you power and strength and might to make more than that. And the only things he can get from your sting jazz is one dollar. And so Isaiah says, why should you be smitten anymore? Huh? Why should you be stricken anymore? You're only going to revolt and rebel even more so. The whole house is sick and the whole heart is faint. Full of wounds and bruises and putrefying sores. That's our condition. As a people. Thank you very much. You're a good offering. You look like you done done this before. <laughs> See, they preaching the word according to the fear of y'all, according to the precepts of the Gentiles. It ain't being preached right. People ain't got no conviction because they don't know what's right. And they say, let us, anyway, I read it, right? Do us call this word. All right. I also shook out of the fold of my garment and said, let Elohim in this way shake out each man from his house and from his property who does not do this word. <laughs> Y'all hear that? Yeah. Nehemiah was expecting a performance. Isn't that something? Even to be thus shaken out and emptied, and all the assembly said, amen. Why can't we get y'all to say amen? And praise Yahweh. And the people did according to this word. Now, mind you, excuse me, but the Father ain't coming down and talking to him. This is Nehemiah speaking from his heart. I know what's right, and this is what we're going to do. Yeah, and see, and back then you didn't do it, he just chop you. Yeah. I wish we had that right today. Yes, we cut this assembly thin. Yes, we'll trim the fat. Hallelujah. <laughs> hallelujah. Oh, hallelujah. hallelujah. Y'all understand, I'm zealous for this. Yes, sir. I understand, I get this. Money. Better sheep, Brother Shane. 47, verse 13 through 16. You know, you've seen what happened over in Nehemiah, right? Y'all seen it, right? Fifth chapter. This stuff is real. What time? Man, we almost done with an early Shabbat. Go ahead. And there was no bread in all the land. Yeah, we've been talking about there's a famine coming. Of course, you know, everybody think about this famine. Then it's, we got, it's going to be plenty of food. You just ain't going to be able to buy it. Huh? The famine we have today is the hearing for the word. That's the famine we got going on today. Hearing the word of y'all. Oh, believe me, you hearing, but you, you don't know what the sound is. You've been too busy watching Hollywood and Charlton Heston. You don't know what no sound is. These people been policing you and TBN unless they get up there and start moon dancing and juggling and jigging and stuff. You wouldn't even know what the word still is today. You have a similitude of it. Read. For the famine was very sore, so that the land of Egypt and all the land of Canaan fainted by reason of the famine. Y'all hear that? Come on. And Joseph gathered up all the money. He gathered up all the silver. The money, yes. That's what the real translation word. Money means the word kaself. means silver. What did Pastor Dow been telling y'all to do? Gather up the silver. We don't want to get no silver. Look, <laughs> silver's falling. <laughs> Keep on laughing. <laughs> Fool. <laughs> and Joseph gathered up all the silver. Read. That was found in the land of Egypt mm -hmm. and in the land of Canaan. The sad part about it is even America got this. You ever see? We buy your gold. Go in there and try to buy gold and see what they say. Uh, we ain't got it for sale. <laughs> you know that America, Americans, this is how dumb 
and stupid people are. You can go down here to the courthouse in Nashville, Tennessee, and they will have a gun buying program. They'll, or they'll give you a Kroger voucher for $50 or $100 to turn in your gun or $25. And people will line up from one end of the plaza all the way to the next with guns in their hands ready to receive a voucher for food or money to turn in their firearm. So there were some intelligent people. I, I heard about that. I was away out of town. I heard I was coming close to town, and I heard about it on the radio. And I said, dang. I said, I'm going to make a detour. I got a little bit of Federal Reserve notes on me. I'm going to stock up, man. I just go, go down there and start buying. And there was already people there doing it. Yes, sir. There was already people there. Hey, how much, they going to give you this, but I'll give you this. Right, and they were right. stacking up on firearm, And then the police got mad and upset because they didn't like the competition. <laughs> but they couldn't stop them from buying the guns, though. Private sale. Yeah, right. uh, um, this, these are legal tender for all debts, yeah, yeah. public and private. See, you don't even read the stuff. You you so we got it in your pocket, but you don't even know what it says. You, when you buy that gun from me, you're making a private contract. I never mind. You can't you can't do nothing with these people today. You can't do nothing with these people today. Read, bro, say. For the corn which they bought. And Joseph brought the money into Pharaoh's house. Mm -hmm. And when money failed in the land of Egypt and in the land of Canaan. The money failed in the land of Egypt and in the land of Canaan. You know Canaan is an extension of Egypt, right? Read on. All the Egyptians came unto Joseph and said, Give us bread, for why should we die in thy presence? For the money faileth. Money faileth. Money faileth. Silver's failing. It's going to fail. This show is going to get bought up first. Hallelujah. Read on. And Joseph said. But think about this. Here's Joseph's second in command. Money's failing in the land, but he is enriching Pharaoh's coffers. Think about that. We don't need the whole pie. We just take a little piece of it. <laughs> Read on. Joseph said, give your cattle, and I will give you for your cattle if money fails. <laughs> we got a beef market, don't we? <laughs> give me your cattle, I'll give it to you. Read on. That was verse 16. All right, go to verse, uh, I ain't even got no 40s. I forgot what I put there. Anyway, we're going to go on then. Look at this. Over in Hosea, or Hosea 11, verses 9 and 10, it says, look. I will not execute the fierceness of my anger, for I am Yahweh, and not man, the Holy One in the midst of thee. They shall walk after Yahweh, he shall roar like a lion. When he shall roar, then the children shall tremble from the west. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Uh, Ah, children going to trim from the, and the West is more than just the United States in case some of you people don't know y'all hearing but the key is and look when he shall roar the children shall tremble from the West we're going to be shaken from the West Mm -hmm. So when the apostle Saul was talking to us, he was telling us, be not so soon shaken in mind and need to be troubled by any spirit. But when he comes, you better be shaken. And don't worry about it, you will be anyway. But he's going to get us up out of here, though. I promise you, he's going to get us up out of here. Why? Because y'all have spoken it. The whole book of Nehemiah is about rebuilding what has been broken down, and it's about restoring what has been burned up. That's what the whole book is about. It's about restoration. And the restoration of all things is at hand. Huh? The king is coming. Hallelujah. You can believe that. We're about repairing, rebuilding, and reinforcing. And we're not re repairing this wall. 
we're repairing our souls. Because they got too many breaches in them. Oh, hallelujah. Is he not the repair of the soul and restore of the breach? Hallelujah. So the best thing you better do is get with the program and get past your challenges. Your mental challenges. And that dumb dumbness. Hallelujah. Is that all right? Look, understand now the prophets. I thought I'd back off a little bit because I started talking on spiritual warfare, man. I mean, the, whew, the devil, he tried to fight to keep you. You ought to hear some reports I get. Hallelujah, but we'll get back on it. But we need to touch on this because we got a lot of people that's coming into this thing. If you hear, the, sure, it's nice to hear from Brother Siege from the Netherlands, wasn't it? Yes, uh, that brother, he got a nice little garden over there. He getting it done. I'm going to put them, I'm going to put the pictures up on that board in there. He's getting it done over there. I mean, he really truly is. He, he got, he sent a day of atonement picture. I got to find, he's, he's dressed all in white. He's by himself. But yet he's not alone. Huh? Why? Because y'all say, I will never leave thee nor forsake thee. And I will be with thee always, even until the end of the world. So he's not alone. And you understand, he's probably got about seven, eight hour difference when he's on blog talk radio. We're here sitting here seven, eight, nine o'clock at night. It's probably about three or four or five in the morning over there. And he's sitting there glued by the phone and the radio. Glued by the phone and the radio. Why? To call his family. Oh, yeah. And that's, hey, bro, sees. Uh, ain't no need in saving money. Uh, the, the, the money that you send for a free will offering, which is a substantial amount. Take that for one month and put it towards a plane ticket. We want to see our brother. Hallelujah. How about that? Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Yeah. TD Snakes be saying, just, just bring it on in and y'all will bless you. <laughs> Hallelujah. Let us stand. I hope y'all be encouraged, all right? If y'all wait, hey, I'm going to tell you one thing. I got a fire and a passion in me that ain't going out. It hadn't went out in 20-something years, and, it, and it's, it's only getting stronger. Hallelujah. You can't kindle dead ashes. <laughs> Hallelujah. And this fire going to burn. It is going to burn bright, too. But I know one thing, according to the vision that y'all showed me, we're going to make it. Well, he didn't show me. But all you got to do is pay attention and watch see what I do. See if I believe it or not. Hallelujah. I mean, y'all, we do thank you for all things. We pray that all these sins sink deep down in our hearts. We thank you for this wonderful Sabbath to give us rest here in this hour. Let us always be mindful of you. Uh, you have given us so much, even in this hour. You have revealed so much to us. We can only hope that we are pleasing in your sight and we'll bring glory and honor to your name. We need strength, strength to minister to the nations. So help us. Father, not only to be ministers, but examples so that people can understand what it really truly means to be a citizen of the kingdom of heaven. We thank you for all things. We thank you for the blood. We thank you for Yahshua, Jesus. We thank you for the, the blood that you shed, the sacrifice you made, and writing our names down in a Lamb's book of life. We thank you for making intercession for us, and we're always mindful to lift you up and to give all the glory. Because if it wasn't for you, we wouldn't be the people who we are today. So we say thank you, Father. In the mighty name of Yahshua, Shabbat Shalom, the King coming. Uh-oh, look at him looking.